Hello guys, Roger here back again, um, part 10 now of this uh, this build of this um, Mark IV tank from World War One, as in captured German uh, livery. So um, I think this is going to be the last segment of the actual build itself. Uh, what I intend to do here is get this ditching being fitted and then make a start on the tracks. Um, and then from that, once I've started the tracks, I'll show you the first couple of bits how they go together. And if I make up a jig, I'll show you that. And that's it then. And then we'll move on to painting. Um, I'm not going to have you watching me do, do tracks. I don't know if you've noticed from previous videos, there's over a thousand, well, there, there are a thousand pieces which each have two sprue connection points. So that's 2,000 parts, 2,000 nibs that need to be cleaned up. So, um, yeah. So at this point, I'm going to say, please subscribe uh, before you get too bored. <laughs> now, moving along, um, this ditching beam here, I still don't know if this is wood or metal or what. I need to um, I need to do some research and find out. And if it is, I need to do some work on it to get a wood grain effect on it. And I'll show you that if I do. Um, there's two options in the kit. One is basically you can fit it to the tracks as it would have been on the tank and then basically they would have put this over the ditch and then just used it as a, as a, a way of making the, the tracks dig in and then the tracks would basically ride over the beam. Um, so that's how it is in use. But these two rails over the top, they were used for mounting it. So basically it would be put onto the tracks here, it would pull it over the top underneath and then round you go. Um, in this one, you can show it in its stowed position. So it's basically going to sit back against these stops on here, um, rested, and then you've got these chains and these photo etch parts here that wrap around the beam like so, and it's uh, it's fitted then. Um, I don't know if there's a picture of it fitted here. No, there's, they don't include it on the, uh, on the instructions. So I will probably um, assemble this off the tank, paint it, weather it, the, the tank itself, and then just before I do all the weathering and painting on this, well, paint it and weathering on this, I'll probably fit it so that it can do the weathering with it on, because once you start messing around with this bright silver chain, the, um, the paint will come off it and look really awful, so that's, that's my plan at the moment anyway. So uh, this is what I need to do now, because I'm going for this option, I'm not going to have it fitted to the tracks like this, I'm going to have it in the stowed position. So to do this, I'm gonna to have to make up these photo etch parts. And the best way I think to do this, to make sure they don't just fall apart, is to solder them. So I'm gonna try and show you some soldering. So I'll get these bits off the sprue and folded up. You don't need to see that. And then um, I've got the solder iron out. I've got my solder. I've got my brush from my flux. Um, and I've got the photo etch parts here. So let me get this uh, started and um, I'll show you some soldering live if I can. I'll probably have to bring the camera in uh, and I'll show you how I do it. So anyway, see you in a minute. I've brought you in closer here guys because I just want to um, give a little tip. I did this on another build, I can't remember which one, and, then, and somebody was really quite impressed. Um, when I fold photo etch, I use these. I've got a small one and a, and a larger one. And you can also use photo etch pliers, but I like to use these where I can because you've got a much sharper edge. Um, one of the ways I, I, I determine how I'm going to fold this neatly is if you fold it with the, you can see on here, this piece of photo etch has got a couple of grooves in it that I'm going to fold to. And what I do, if I, um, I use a single sided razor blade as my folding tool, and what I do is just stroke the blade across until I find the groove. And I push the blade down into that groove, undo the clamp, and slide it across. And now I know that that part is underneath that, the groove is underneath the corner there. And I can fold that now, over like that, 90 degrees. Yeah, and I know that that fold is where it's supposed to be. Also know, or we start from the outside, if I'd done the inside fold first, I wouldn't be able to push this under. So, you need to do the outer fold first, then do the inner fold, and then, and then you, you can you can now you do the inner fold. You can line up that groove. Hang on, where is the groove? It's just inside of that one. So now I'm going to clamp that lightly, line up the tool with the inner groove, 
go across, clamp it down, and then fold it up. And you can see there, one of the problems is because this section here is thicker, what's basically happening is, as I fold this part up here, just to focus. As I fold this first bend, the second bend, the first bend is trying to open. So we get a pair of pointy nose pliers and just stick them in there and give it a little tweak and a little squeeze. And there we go, that's done. And that's that's basically how I go about it. When it comes to doing this outside edge, what I'm gonna do is use one of these side pieces. So I can hold it in there like that, you see. And then I'm not gonna squash that. If I use the main part, then I'd squash it. So again, I'm gonna put it under the clamp. Get the razor blade into the first, I'll put it right out of the way first. Get the razor blade into the first groove. There it is in the first groove. Push it over, hold it square. Get under it, like so. And fold it up. And then go back, hold it again. Get the razor blade into the groove. Slide it over. And then up again. And the same as before, it's folding it open. So I'm just going to take that part again and then with a small pair of tweezers just close it down. Just one little thing to watch out for fellas on these little clamps that go on the top um, remember I said about always folding up the groove up to you well if you see here these have all got the groove on this side facing up so if you fold them all that you'll basically wreck two because when you look here, it's supposed to have one folded out and one folded it the other way. So we'll have to um, fold them either way, two one way, two the other way. As we can see here, um, they've sort of drawn this with the, the, uh, the hold pieces on the top. And then do a diagram here with them underneath. And we can see that the holes, the hold pieces have to be one with their legs extending the same way as these extensions are on the on the um, TP8 part. So I'm going to solder these because I want them to be pretty good and not fall apart. Um, but one of the biggest problems with soldering parts is holding them. Clamping them in position so they stay in place so you can hold them. Now when you're super gluing you could hold them in place with your fingers or a bit of tape or whatever. But the trouble is when you're using soldering the heat just is, makes everything impossible. You can't use it. The tape will just burn away and the glue may get into the solder, which will make the joint weak anyway, or, or not work at all. And of course you can't hold parts of your fingers and solder them because you, your fingers can't take the, uh, the heat. And with parts this small, you know, you, um, you wouldn't be able to anyway. So you have to use a bit of ingenuity and think about what you've got around you. And in this case, I'm using a bulldog clip. Now, if you look at this, the actual part here, the actual main leg, The actual main leg is sat inside the bulldog clip and then I'm able to push that down so that the turned over part at the top so that the turned over part at the top is actually here and then I can take one of the brackets and push that down just open the clamp up a bit push that down so now you can see if I try and focus this and turn it around picture tells a thousand words you can see what I've done it's all clamped up like that so now I can solder that in there. So to do soldering, obviously we need a soldering iron. And what I've got here is a, um, an item which this one here cost, it wasn't cheap. Um, but I got it from um, Maplins, who are now a part of Radio Shack, I believe. But certainly in the UK, Maplins have gone bust. So I don't know if Radio Shack in the US has gone as well. But um, yeah, obviously you need a soldering iron. And the one thing I've found is you want to be able to file the tips down to a fairly decent point. And a lot of them now, they've got like, um, the, the tip is kind of made of like a composite material, uh, almost like a powder when you file it, it just 
disintegrates. It's, it's almost like um, like lead. So look for one or a cheaper one with, with the steel tip on. This has got the steel tip on it, which makes it a lot better. Um, then I've got this solder here. Now I've tried a few different ones, and this one actually works really, really well. It's Rosen Core, and a lot of people say you shouldn't use a cord solder for soldering brass, but I found this one works wonderfully. And the fact that it's such a fine, small solder, you get, you can, you're able to just tap the iron on it and get a tiny little blob on, which you'll see in a minute. And then I use a flux. You need a, obviously the flux. I use a liquid flux, and I use this one, Cara's Red Flux. Um, Quite lethal stuff so make sure you keep it stored well out of the way and I keep it in a box so it always stays vertical and can't fall over. A brush for applying the flux and use it for nothing else because once it's had flux so it'll pretty much be destroyed. So I've got the soldering iron on, I've got, this one's a temperature adjustable, I've got it on 400 degrees. Reason being is this um, this bulldog clip is going to act as a hell of a heat sink so we need to get the heat in and fast and get out. Um, if this was in the middle of the mid-air, I'd, I'd put it, you can see, I know this, this soldering, um, this solder is about 240, it's Martin Point. So I would set the, the, the torch about 260, bang, go away. Uh, but with this, with so much heat, I mean, I'm not even sure this is going to work. This is the first one I've done. You can see on here, I've got the other three parts and the main leg there. So you're seeing this for the first time. So this may completely fall on its ass, who knows. So what I do is just clean the end of the, the iron off. And I'm just going to put some solder on here. Because, oh, you can't see that, can you? Oh, that shot, sorry guys. Right, so I'm just going to put some solder on here onto the soldering iron. Yeah, and this is what's called tinning. And then I'm just going to clean the end of the iron off. And you can see that now, what that's done, that's removed all the oxidation and everything from the end of the iron. And it's nice and clean and fairly bright. Yeah. So now what I'll do is just pick up the tiniest drop of solder. Just a tiny, tiny drop right on the tip. There we go, there's some on there now. On the, you can see it on the, on the back side. It's just literally the tiniest amount. Put the iron back in there. I'm going to get some flux and I'm just going to paint some flux onto there. Now that will capillary down into that joint. So now I've got some flux on there. I'm trying to get the camera to bloody stay in focus. So I've got some solder on there on the iron. I've got some flux on the joint. So what I'm going to do is just get the solder iron and just with the tip of the iron just basically touch it. And that is it. And you can see now, I've got some solder deposited on there like that, which is way too much. So what I'm going to do now is just put some more heat into it, and the solder will flow into that joint. And there you have it. Now, isn't the tidiest of joints but the beauty of what you can do now is now that's soldered together I can use sanding sticks to clean up the excess okay so that first time filming this was um, pretty bloody awful so you can see there there's the second side clamps the brackets on there all clamped up I've got a tiny drop of solder on the soldering iron I'm gonna try and keep it focused and just touch it on there and you can see now the solder is deposited on the bracket now I need to make it flow in the joint so I just make the solder iron make it flow and there you go that is now soldered on because I can see the solder has gone across the two parts so again I can take it like this try and stay on the camera this time hold the bracket in my little tweezers and with my green sanding sponge I can just put the corner into the corner and sand away to remove excess solder. Now you can buy little tools to suck the excess solder away and you can also get like a wire mesh stuff which I've got. I've got both and I've tried them and I can't get on with them personally. So it's 
my advice is to uh, is to do it this way. And like I said, if I didn't edit it out in the first clip, because I kept going back here off camera all the time, um, you got to remember this is a steel bracket that's going to be all rusty and weathered and everything, so uh, you don't really need to worry about it too much. And there we have it. There is our soldered together bracket, and that will take all sorts of abuse that will not fall apart you can it's just so much better than super gluing um especially for stuff like this that's going to be wrapping around on, on the model when it's finished because the chain's going to i've got to bend the chain around here and close it back up with pliers and then it's just going to be hanging there on the model so you know you want it to be fairly robust and be able to be pulled about and everything so i'll go on and do the other one now and then i'll come back with the next step okay guys there you go so now you can see basically that with a bit of cleanup and a bit of time taken you can get a, a nice joint on there. I can get it to focus, which I don't think I can. But no, you can get a nice um nice solder joint and that'll be like I say very very strong. I will do another soldering video for you when I'm soldering some bigger photo etch because there are a few pictures on uh, or a few videos on YouTube about how to solder but none of them really show you how to hold the smaller parts and the different ways of soldering there's, there's like you can get solder balls you can get solder paste um, there's different temperatures of solder paste so like you can build up a uh, say you want to build up a box um, so you'd use a high temperature solder for building the box and then as you start soldering brackets to it and stuff you use a lower temperature because one of the biggest problems with soldering if you if you sort of soldered something here onto there and then you came and soldered something there if you took your time without heat sink this area here would just fall apart because of the heat so what you do there is you put a board or clamp or something on there or something that's going to take the heat away from that area when you're soldering here so it's just all little bits and pieces of that that i've learned the hard way so um yeah, keep your eyes open guys and um, keep a look out for that one. You can see we have to assemble these these chains and then glue the eye bolts here with their um, welded on brackets to this beam. Um, and also I've got to put the uh, photo etch around the end but I'm going to wait to see what this is first and see if I need to add any wood effects. But I've made all this, I just spent the last hour doing this work with the chains bit fiddly you will um, pull the links apart and stuff but uh, yeah we can see it there there we go there's the, the chains and then what that this bracket will wrap around the the uh, frame that goes over the top of the tank this will be glued to the actual beam itself and then this is the bracket that clips onto the track or bolts onto the track I don't know whatever and then drags the drags the beam around so um there we go you can see this uh, Quite a nice bit of work there. It's, um, it's a nice, um, nice touch to tackle the lead of the chain, but it's not brass chain; it's steel chain. So pulling those links apart and then closing them back up again is um, it's fun to say the least. Right, you have the tracks. Here's the um, little extensions that go on every sort of fifth or tenth track leg or whatever. So yeah, I forgot to tell you as well, guys. Today is Wednesday, the seventeenth of October, two thousand and eighteen. So tomorrow night. It's one week since I started this kit, so we've done quite well. So there's the tracks. There's five of these sprues. Let's put four back in the box. I don't need these. They can go back in the box. And here we can see the track links. Here's the instructions. So we've got a B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. So great, we've got other different parts. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a couple off the sprues now and assemble them. Um, so yeah, I'm going to assemble a couple of these now and then I'm going to have a look at them and see if I can think about a way of designing up a jig to actually make up a jig so I can just clip them all together and then glue them. So um, let's see how I get on. I'll do this live now while you're on the, while you're on the camera. So I want, this is, 
Where's the numbers? Right, okay, so these are B1. So I want two of these. Oh, it's a nice, um, it's a nice plastic. Two of them. And then I want two twos. So I'll put those there so we know they're twos. Then I want two threes. Hang on. Okay, so they're twos. They're threes. Oh, I see, so it goes, yeah. So these are all twos. These are all three, so you get three wide and then two wide, three wide and then two wide. So, Jesus, that's gonna be confusing when it comes to cutting all these out. My plan is, is to cut them all out, put them all into pots, little shop pots across the top of the bench and just sit here to my heart's content and sand down the nibs, or nubs, whatever you call them. So here's my fours. There's the two fours and then two fives. So yeah, my plan is to cut all these out, put them into pots, take them out, sand them, put a good documentary or something on YouTube and just sit here and listen to that. Um, so here we go then, right, sanding stick. Just give the ends of these a quick clean up. It'd be nice to think that my little precision Tamiya cutters will be that good that I could get away with not having to um, denib these parts. In fact, there's nothing much on them anyway. Please don't tell me I'm going to have to use tweezers to do every one. That just isn't fair. But, as sick as it may sound, I actually enjoy stuff like this repetitive because you can kind of just switch off and think about life and just sit at your bench and enjoy yourself which is after all is why we do this isn't it we, we do this for enjoyment so you know you may you may be one of those people like me that loves doing cockpits and stuff and getting down and dirty with the detail but sometimes it's nice to just sit back do this. I don't know if you've ever done a set of Master Club tracks, the resin ones, and you've got to um, clean every single one up. Every single one's got a bit of flash on it. Every single one needs a 0.5 hole drilled in it. And then you've got each link has on the T55s. Anyway, each link has two pins. It's um, and they're workable tracks. The problem is because they're unlike the full tracks that are metal, they're resin. They're quite light. So they want to um, they want to hold their shape, you know. So you end up putting it down, and instead of just falling flat, flat, it's like a snake. So we've got two, three, four, five, and these are the two ones. So let's grab our instructions. So this goes this way. What I'm going to do is put some glue on here first. Put some glue in that groove and put some glue in that groove. So I've got, so they go in with the flange facing upward and the holes facing back. So, so that one goes that way. Bloody glue's gonna be dry by now. It, I guess that's it. Drop more glue on there. I'm assuming you get extras. I hope you get extras because I think I'm probably going to lose some of these. The fact the flange goes at the top is just uh, adding insult to injury. So that one's going that way round. Oh my god, this is going to be fun. Oh, I see, and then oh, they've just fallen over. So the pin on that one 
engages in that one. Yeah, I'm gonna need to make a jig for this. I can hardly even see what I'm doing. I hope you guys can, because I certainly can't. Oh dear, dear, dear. It looks right. So let's just get another two. I don't think I'll, think I'll bother building two of these. I think I'll just build one because I, I need to get underneath my um, magnifying glass thingy for this really. So the four goes towards me. So that's going to go on like that. And then the five is going to go... Where's the five gonna go? Oh, I see the five's gonna go that way. Right guys, I've brought you in because I wanna show you this and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to with focus and stuff. You have to excuse my fingernails, I'm really sorry, but I cannot do this with gloves on, so I'm sorry guys, but I wanna show you this. Now this is, I think probably this kit's biggest downfall. Massive, massive downfall. Um, these tracks are a joke, absolute bloody joke. Now, I'm going to show you this first. This is the, the link that goes on. And if you look, you can see on the side there, there's two, there's two little ridges there. Yeah, see there's two little tiny ridges? Right, well, they are designed to go into these two tiny, tiny, I mean, I don't know if you can get this in. Can you see there's a tiny little cutout there and one there? Just there, on the outside and there's another one there. Those two little ridges have to locate in those two little deer grooves. Just go in there. They have to locate in those two little grooves, like so. So, I don't know if you can see this. They go in there, so one has to locate, it's just in line with that front bolt, and the back one is in line sort of just in front of the, the second bolt, like that. Yeah. So, here's the one I did earlier, repeater style. And you can see they're glued together, right? Now this is the first one I made. I've only made one. When you come to put it on the tank, now I'll admit I've got these front um, tensioners in their maximum forward position. So these have got to now go over these tensioners like that. Yeah, which they do. And you look at how far away they are the actual frame of the tank so obviously those tensioners need to go back a bit so we can get it you know closer in it needs to be more sort of like that like that than sort of stuck right out and then when we come to the rear round we put them on the sprockets you can see it's better and it's very accurate it's very nice looking where it, it sort of stays away from the steel framework it's just going to ride around it like that, you can see. So all the way around the tank, I think you'll find it'll stay away from the steel framework, yeah? Now, bear in mind, they tell you in the instructions, if you feel difficult to make workable tracks, you can choose an easier way for static display. Don't cement two, three, four, and five, just cement B1 one by one. So they would end up, they would be like that, stuck on the track. Link. So that would actually be inaccurate. So you're either stuck with getting some aftermarket tracks that don't have all this fiddling about, doing this, which is inaccurate, or making these little bastards. And I think I'm gonna go for the third option. I'm gonna see if I can make up some kind of jig so that when I slot them in, they just fall into the right place rather than having to pick up on those two little legs every time because I've got to make 184 of these. So um, we'll call that a wrap. That is a wrap, that's, that's that, lovely. 
Um, that's it. Part 10 over. The next time you see me, the tracks will be done and we'll be starting on painting. So, um, so I hope you've enjoyed this build. It's been, uh, it's been six days. So whatever it is a week, 168 hours in a week, isn't it? So take off 24. So that's 144 hours, basically, to build this model and get it to here. I'll take these pegs off now. Um, yeah, 144 hours to build this model and get it to here. Oh, just one more thing. Remember I put the white glue on the guns? That's how it works. It makes them kind of almost springy. So you get the... So they don't just keep dropping down. You can put them where you want to. So that's something I'd never tried before. And I actually managed to only free one of them off to turn. So, um... Yeah, I'm not going to bother trying to break the others off, but uh, yeah, if you're building this kit, what you might want to do is go down through the top, put a pin through, and then um, if you want your guns to move, and then uh, go from there. But as you can see, all that interior detail we put in there, gone. Every single bit of it is gone. So um, yeah, there we go, guys. <clears throat> That's the model built. Job done. So. I'll see you in a couple of days when these tracks are done and we get back on with the painting. Um, still well on track to have this finished for November 11th, which was my original plan. Um, so yeah, if, if I don't go insane or throw my toys out the pram with these tracks, I'll see you when they're done. Worst comes to the worst, I'll buy some aftermarkets. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please don't forget to come back at least by November the 11th and see this one finished, all painted up and weathered and everything. And um, I'll also have some other stuff, some reviews and some other builds going on in the meantime. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Speak to you all soon, guys. Bye-bye.